Welcome to September's Legal Challenge. This problem is called Sum of Distances in Tree. There is an undirected connected tree with n nodes labeled from 0 to n minus 1 and n minus 1 edges. You are given the integer n, that's the number of nodes, and the array edges, where edges i equals a and b, indicating that there is an edge between nodes a and b in the tree. Return an array answer of length n, where answer i is the sum of the distances between the ith node in the tree and all other nodes. So if we wanted to find the answer for this node here, node 0, we are going to count the distance to all the other nodes. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you can see the answer is 8 here. So at first glance, it kind of looks like we can just do a traversal uh, starting with some node and do a variation of Dijkstra's algorithm, keeping track of the nodes that we visited and just increase the distance traveled by one and keep track of that somewhere and return that, right? Uh, so let's begin with that approach. Let's say we want to first build a structure to tra traverse, right? And we, we're not given a binary tree. Notice this isn't a binary tree at all. It's kind of like more like a graph. Um, so let's create a graph here. What we'll do is make a default dict and we'll make a list of values and that's going to be all the next nodes or child nodes rather that this node can travel to. So for source target and edges, keep in mind that this is bidirectional so we can travel either way. So that means for the graph S we want to append the target and for the graph T we want to append the source because we want it both ways. Now to keep track of the, uh, make sure that we're not going to do any cycles here, we can just use a visited set. What I'll do is create a function, passing in the ith node that we want to calculate for. And we're going to have to have some, some structures here. We'll have a set, and we'll first include this node itself so that we don't travel it. Uh, we'll also have a queue, and this will be the queue with a tuple of the node that we've traveled as well as the distance distance that we've traveled so far. So this would be zero at first. And we'll also have to have some sort of output, right? So output will start with zero. All right, so while there's a queue, let's first pop off. We'll have the current node, I suppose, as well as the distance. And that means we have to travel to the next one for next in graph of current. As long as we haven't visited before, if next not in visited, Let's add to the visited set, this next. And we are going to add back to our queue the next as well as the distance plus one. But we want to keep track of you know, all the sum of distances, right? So we'll say output plus equals distance plus one. Finally, we just return our output. And all we would have to do then is return a list. Uh, we'll say travel i for i in range of n, and n is given to us, right? So this was my first approach, and I wasn't sure if it would work. It looked like it would work, but unfortunately, it reaches a time limit exception. Reason for that is this is going to be an n squared solution, right? For every single node that we want to travel, we have to travel again. And even if we did like LRU cache here, it wouldn't really make any difference. Um, so what can we do? Um, well, essentially then, what we'd have to do is figure out a way to calculate all this in one traversal, or, or maybe two. And I'm going to go through the answer here. Uh, it's a bit complicated, so I'm going to show the whiteboard. All right, so this was our tree that we've, our example, right? Well, what is some value that we could calculate for every single node in one pass? One of the things that we, we could calculate is how many nodes, including itself, are underneath this tree. So we can do just whatever, a depth first search, and every node starts with one, right? Each one of these leaves has at least one. And what we do is when we return, let's say we go depth first search and we go back to two, we'll add whatever value is here, up here, back here. So we start with one, this becomes one, two, three, and including itself, that's another one, so that's four, right? So this becomes four. And here, this returns one, four, that's five, and include itself, this is gonna be six. So what this shows is how many nodes, including itself, are beneath the tree. So you can see it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. These all have one. 
okay, that's great and everything, but how does this help us? Well, if we did our traversal first, let's just say we had the answer um, for our parent node. So say that somehow we figured out what the answer was for our root node eight, right? If we had the answer to our parent, there's actually an equation that we could use to calculate what the answer would be for, for here. So think about it, if we want to figure out what's the answer for one, it's essentially everything to the right side here gets shifted by one. So how many nodes are on the, on the right side? That's gonna be uh, n number of nodes subtracted by how many counts are here at this child, right? So this would be, let's call it C of child. And that would be six minus one, right? So we can see like, let's take our answer from the parent. That would be eight. We can add the n minus child here. That's gonna be five. But keep in mind, we actually need to subtract everything to its left side. So everything beneath here actually gets shifted by one as well, because you know everything here to the right side is like one further, but everything to the left side here is one closer, right? So we have to minus our count of the child as well here. So that would be one. So in total, that's gonna be eight plus five, that's 13 minus one, and it's gonna be an answer of 12. So we can do this in two passes. We have to first figure out though, um, we need to keep track of the counts in some sort of array. And we also need to calculate the answer for that root node in the very first pass. And if we do that, then all we need to do is use this equation traverse everything again, doing another depth for search, and we can calculate everything and add that to some sort of array and return that. All right, so hopefully that kind of helped explain the approach. Let's begin. All right, let's first initialize a couple of variables here. Um, we'll first have our output, and this will just be starting with zero times n. And we also want the counts, right, of everything beneath it. And this would start with one because each node itself counts as one. Uh, and we'll also have to have a self variable here for the root answer. I'm just gonna call that root. And this begins with, uh, I believe, I believe that starts with zero. All right, so let's first call our def for search or create our def for search. And what I'm gonna do instead of using a visited set, I'm gonna keep track of the current and the parent. Okay, so this will be current and this will be parent. And the reason for that is we're doing a for search. We just want to make sure we don't travel back up. Okay, so as long as the current, the next node is not equal to the parent, we're just going to skip that. And we also need to pass in the depth right here. Um, and I'll show you why in a bit. All right, so uh, first thing, we'll initialize our output. Uh, I'm just call it O just so we don't get confused. And we're going to say for, let's call it child in graph of current. Now, if child does not equal parent, then we're gonna continue our depth for search and we wanna add back to our output that we're gonna return, whatever returns here. So depth for search of, let's see, child current and the depth, but each time we travel down, it's gonna be depth plus one, right? And I'm gonna to add to the root here, the depth plus one as well, kind of like how we did it to in our first approach. And this is gonna keep track of our answer for the root node. Uh, that's gonna come in handy later. Now, once we finish this whole, whole uh, loop, I believe, then we could just calculate our current. That's gonna be count of current is now equal to the output. And make sure to actually return the output here as well, uh, because you can see we have to add that up, right? Okay, so depth for search, let's call this. Uh, the current will be zero. Parent at first will be nothing, we'll call it negative one. And the depth will also start with zero right here. So just to make sure, I wanna see what this looks like. Um, let's make sure this looks correct. All right, so this looks like all the counts, right? This is six nodes, four nodes, and the answer to zero, root zero was eight. So we have everything that we need. Now we just need to create another depth for search. I'm gonna call it depth for search two. And this also we have to add in the current, the parent, as well as the 
answer to the parent. I'm going to call that answer parent. Uh, and this one will be a little bit easier. We just have to say, okay, output of the current is just equal to answer p. And it's a little, that's actually not named very well, but that's okay. Um, and then we just have to say for child in, uh, let's see, graph of current, as long as the child is, n if child not equal to parent, then we'll just call our different search two, but this time pass in the child, the current, and the answer P though, remember, oh, we have to pass in the answer P, and we have to add N minus count of child, or not child, or is it child? I guess it is, yeah, child, and we also need to subtract count of child like this. Okay, so let's call our def for search. So zero uh, first parent, and then our self dot root will be the answer at first. And finally, return our output. Okay, so let's make sure this works. Okay, that looks like it's working right, so submit it. Ah, there we go. So time complexity, this is gonna be O of N, right? Even though we make two passes, that's still O of N. Uh, it's very tricky. I, I think the, the hardest part is coming up with uh, this answer here. And really, <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend like I came up with this. I, I've, I had to look it up, and even after looking it up, it took me quite some time to figure out how this actually works. Um, it's a really br brilliant algorithm. But I think it's pretty hard pressed to expect someone to come up with this on, on the spot. Uh, but hey, that's like one of the things we learn, right? And um, yeah, it's like we're kind of gathering up information in two steps. And once we kind of figure out some partial information, then we can do another step and, and f like complete the information. All right. Well, I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.